Hello, everybody. Namaste. Salam. Bonjour. Can you see us? We are live, but we don't see anybody. And uh, hello. Please let us know if you see us. I'm going to check. Yes, I think we're starting to broadcast. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Hi, everybody. So today is a very special show with Charlie Freak. And uh, Charlie Freak is going to be decoding... One o seven. Is that how you say it? Sorry, <laughs> my English. You know, <laughs> it, it's yeah. But, uh, it's a play on the numbers one o seven as as uh, as a name. One o seven. One o seven. One o seven. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Charlie. That's, that's why we need your brilliance always. So you're watching the live stream on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter. And because we are just not able to organically reach anybody, I'm going to please ask everybody to tag your friends, share this on your groups, your WhatsApp groups, your Signal groups, your Telegram channels, and just kind of spread the word around that Charlie Freak is doing this very special show, 107, decoded on Brilliantly Sexy with the Vina Core. And we have a very special guest later today. Shabana O'Brien is going to be singing live for us. So woo, give it up for everybody. And yes, lots of comments coming in, people joining in from everywhere. So thank you so much for that. Charlie, let's get into it. Okay, yeah. Um, we're going to watch a 20-minute clip from uh, the movie. Now, obviously, so many of you have have already seen it. and um, But what I want to prepare you is I want you to, cause you've heard it once or twice, maybe even three times. So this time I want you to feel as much as you see. And I want you to put the bigger picture. Because we think, um, in, uh, for Mac. Um, sorry, sorry, Charlie, we just lost just you for incredible. Incredible. Okay, what I'm going to do to uh, uh, we get uh, solid with the uh, audio, I'm going to stop the, I'm still here, but um, but that'll be of the audio. So, so I'm going over to, um, to audio. And is the signal video? Yeah. The, the signal the is better and... I'm just trying to load this. Let me see. Um, I got a storm coming here. You can see by the sunset. It's just spectacular. Sorry, guys. Can you hear that? Please let me know. What's going on? Just trying to load up the the file that Charlie sent me earlier today. So guys, just be patient, please. Yes, there we go. Let me know if you can all hear this. It's a pause right now, so you play it. Yes. I'm going to put you and me on. volume from your end. Now. 
no volume to there's no volume at your end. No volume, Davina. No volume from you or from the show. I'm going to try something, okay? Okay. All you have to do is just plug your um, computer speed. No, all you have to do is just one of your songs to you play together. No volume to be. Okay. Uh, a little bit. Turn it on. So, Charlie, maybe we can go on the internet to get it. Um. <laughs> it's gonna take it's gonna take time uh and then you know it's gonna eat up your stream because of the bandwidth of having to um uh to play it so so you would have to search um i'm gonna try once more i think they can hear it hear it volume but very low okay let me fix that okay yeah. So again, again, Davina, so simple. It's just like the other night when you were playing your uh, the songs. Just things up, and if you play it through through your, your computer speaker, it'll broadcast through the speakers out. Very low. But you can hear it though. Yeah, but they they have to be able to do it though. Should I go? So it's I... very very important. Okay, I'm gonna go on YouTube and find what, it. What what player? What player are you using to play it? Like, what are you using? Um. Hold on, let me see what player it is. It's. Windows player. Okay, Ch turn the volume, crank the volume up on Windows player. What is Windows player using? Oh, I I don't know, Charlie, but it's the volume is it's very very high. it's the hundred percent. Well, that may be the case for your computer. But it also has to percent in your player. So, um, if, if you're dream that is, um, you're going to have to go to the channel. Well, I'm um, getting comments, then fine. Well, we can hear it. Because this, you know, I'd rather just say goodbye to everyone for now. And uh, and we can redo this at a time when it's done right, because because we, we we can't do anything but our our level best on on the show. It has to be perfect. Okay. So if people can hear it, if people can hear it, I can't. But if people can hear it, that's that's great.
Okay, let me ask, uh, let me ask everybody, guys. We're gonna try once more. Sorry about that. That sounds better, Divina. Are you getting good comments? I people can hear it, Charlie. Okay, great. So you go uh, go back to the very beginning of it, and as soon as it transitions off the Freak Sense TV to the image of the bridge, just pause it for a sec. Okay. Let me go back. So sorry, guys. We're um, and right and remember, right now it's not showing on the screen. It's just you and I are showing. Okay, so I'm gonna try to. So yeah, screen share it, and um, and then like I say, as soon as it transitions to the bridge, I just need you to pause it for a sec. I'll say a few words and we can get going. Guys, I apologize for this. Please bear with us. Charlie, keep talking about something else while I'm trying to figure this out. Okay, so everyone, uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, and then uh, Davina was trying to get it started, remember, as you watch this 20 minute clip, what I want you to do is notice things, feel things, allow the the feeling of, of looking at older um, nostalgic vehicles uh, and open plains and, um, and unfettered mountains allow that to seep within you and um, <clears throat> influence your your emotions your feelings um, and because it, it's so key there is nothing absolutely nothing that is random everything has a powerful message here and when we get started at the beginning what i want you to notice is that we're going to go through uh under a bridge so a bridge is is a high road and a bridge like a high road in a song, all comes from this ancient gnosis of connecting to God. So, so I want you to notice the imagery that's on this bridge in the opening clip. Do you see the rams? These are, remember what I said, they're rams on a bridge and a bridge is a highway. These are high rams. So in the Bible, in the Old Testament, who built Solomon's temple? High ram Abif. Hiram Abif built Solomon's temple. And that's not a name, that's an allegory for a man, any man who does the work. So a high ram abif is the high ram above, as in the lamb rising to become a lion at the right hand side of the father, which by the way is Jesus Christ. So Hiram Abiff is foreshadowing he who would come in the New Testament, which is Jesus Christ. And so that bridge is that we're about to go under penitently to the right, which is to the east. And you'll listen and hear that there's a storm coming and he needs to get out in front of it and he can tow it like a trailer into the east because that's the allegory for taking the load off of Fanny and putting the load right on God. So there's a storm of brewing, but that's no worry to me. I'm going to take all of my storms and I'm going to tow them like a trailer into the east and God will deal with them because that's what God wants to do for us so that we can truly be free. So in the beginning, notice the high ram abif 
which is the high bridge, the path to heaven. And this is foreshadowing Jesus Christ who comes. Okay, go ahead. Let's play this beauty and let's listen in and absorb it. No volume, Divina. There you go. Crank it. Check the comments, Davina. Just lost audio, Davina. Hour of time and uh, what a guy, you know, you know, he, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, uh, June 28th, uh, 2001, he predicted that Osama bin Laden would be the guy that they would accuse of, of uh, doing some dastardly deed against a major city and, and, and that after that, the whole world would change ramp up surveillance and the government would be uh, become more draconian you know even, even before then i mean he predicted 9 11 months in advance he, he before that he predicted the school shootings by kids uh uh ramped up on psychoactive drugs that would get them ramped up and then and they'd be uh, essentially uh you know yeah that they would they would uh, do these school shootings, and then they'd use that as an excuse to go against the Second Amendment. The guy was very uh, perceptive in that way, uh, understood, you know, the big picture in a lot of ways. He wasn't perfect. I, you know, I knew Bill. Uh, he he had clay feet, but uh, he did understand uh, 
uh, in many ways what was going on. He was Navy, uh, Navy Intel, and uh, you know I was one that talked to him about you know, he wasn't understanding the alien initiative. That was uh, that was part of a scam. He changed his tune after our conversations uh, back in those days. But, um, he was he was a seeker of truth, like so many today. And, um, he was my friend, and uh, I'll miss him. Because they're just a machine. 
Okay, but Chris, listen, you're, you're not going to lift the Titanic off the bottom of the sea floor at this point. But I mean, if you get down there and you photograph in the right spot, you can see the damage. It's the Olympic, not the Titanic. They were switched. You know, they're doing transplants from kids to get the growth hormones and stuff, and, the, and, and then the adrenochrome, and they're trying to stay younger looking. And it's all a scam. Wired Magazine's been writing about this. This isn't just fringe stuff. What do you think Wired is fringe? A pastor's wife in Nebraska. The whole world's looking at the, the crash footage, and she sees divers in the water. She records it. We wouldn't have learned all the rest of this stuff. You go, Butter Zillion is like a gift to the country. <laughs> Jed is all about the numbers. Every witch, you know, it's three times everything. That's the maximum power of the spell. Three times they turn in the circle, you know, three times knock, knock, knock on the door. <sighs> Hello, Osiris number 17. What's the maximum power of the spell? 51. Okay, that's what we do our traffic control from planet Earth from Area 51. It's part of the magic. These people are a cult. They're a cult with the numbers. Listen, Waco. It's, 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 it's 51 days for the standoff. Why 51 days? Oh, hey, let me get back to you, bro. We'll talk a little later. All right, all right. Michael LaVon Robinson. <laughs> Hello. Everybody knows he's back. Monica, please, please, you're hurting my brain. It's obvious. I get this. Look at the videos. There's like 50 of them out there. Come on. Aranon, Rianon, your parents were into this Anon thing. No, it's a GM seed on the GMO truck. Well, Samson, listen, yeah, you get into the work day on the space station, you just free fall home. That's why you want to do that. You want to be on Space Force building the space station. And you'll wear a titanium suit. Oh, darn, I got your answer machine. But listen, Linda, you got to pick up. <laughs> you aren't going to believe this. Uh, uh, are you there? Uh, all right, I'll come back. But Scott, these people are using fake needles. I mean, they got little caps on the needles. They're not taking the vaccine. They want you to take the vaccine. They know that stuff is crap. Well, Cynthia, because they don't know that the IRS is a Puerto Rican corporation. That's where the checks are going. Come on. This, this can't just be out of the Philippines. L.A., that, you don't see anything about pygmies and Lilliputians being uh, a problem when the Israelites were going into the promised land, it was giants. I can't believe I've been out of coverage on myself for, I don't know, like 45 minutes. I've had cells were everywhere out here. But Richard, stop. We need to stop. I can't afford to slow down. You need to catch up. And it's not just about draining the swamp. First, you got to flood the swamp. One flush isn't going to do it. Yeah, Paul, I, you know, I'm glad for the invitation, um, but I don't know if I want to go hang out with that good old boy club of attorneys and secret handshake clubs. I mean, I, I know the game. Let's talk energy. And, uh, we'll see if we can work out a stone to do it. Okay. 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 scriptures says that uh, when people are under a curse, when they're out of step with uh, God in heaven on the way to connect their lives, they can lay up wealth and treasure, but it's like putting money in a bank with holes in it. You can stuff it full of stuff, but you're just leaving a trail of, of money as you go. We've been doing something like that here in America. Something's wrong. We work hard we accomplish great things the people are smart they're not dumb and yet we're acting dumb dumb to the curse that lies on the land from some events that have been not dealt with not reconciled when a murder occurred in the land until the murderer was found until he was prosecuted until judgment was brought to the situation justice. The crops wouldn't do well, the rain wouldn't come, and uh, it was widely understood, widely recognized that you had to bring justice to that situation. One of the other scriptures that comes to mind, who will be valid?
rally in it for justice sake. We have a whole country full of people that are satisfied just being observers. This stolen future that we have lost, all the promises, the beautiful things that we saw that we were going to enjoy and accomplish in our generation, stolen from us. I hear people all the time, oh, we went to the moon. All we've been doing ever since is going in circles, round and round and round and round. Never a straight answer about what's really going on. Big doors turn on tiny hinges. On this one event, generations have been lost. How do we break a curse? What's required? Just those that have blocked us from identifying and apprehending the criminals behind the murder, not just of an individual who had great influence here in America, but across the world. The coup had been going on for a long time. The preparations, the stealing of America, the cutting of holes into the bag where we keep our wealth, that had been greatly perfected over generations. But the final dagger into the side, into the heart of America, was one murder. From that location, all of those dark angels have gone out, restrained, choked, bound America from doing that which uh, was its destiny. Our future was stolen from us by men artfully protecting their own interests, selling their souls, enslaving their fellow man for their own gain in this world with no thought to there are many who are called to break this curse, like sentinels who observed and now are ready to act. Those that do act right now who step their foot forward, you know, Abraham, everywhere that he went and said, wherever he laid the sole of his foot that was given to him, so Mama, we, we the same on own our ground and not give it over, not give up, not turn our head the other direction, not ignore that justice has not been done. I'm headed to D.C. Got room in the passenger seat. You can ride shotgun. Who will be valiant for justice sake? We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win.
Okay, that's it, everyone. Thank you so much, Davina, for uh, playing that, and uh, and it it did work out. So thank you so much. And we've got so much to get through, and we're a little behind schedule, so we're just going to jump right into this, everyone. I'm going to keep my video off, um, so we can protect and preserve the audio, which is which is all important here. So the first thing that I wanted to start with is. Uh, something that I posted this morning, and um, there, there's method to my madness, and there are many things that I've held back um, uh, for later in the process. And today I revealed a couple of major things. One, that if you want to know the mind of John F. Kennedy Jr. and thus the plan of Q, then what is important is to know, and I, I don't mean saying that you read it 30 years ago and you sort of remember it, but to know Sun Tzu and uh, the master treatise, which is The Art of War, because this is, this is a book that isn't so much about war as it is about a way of life, which is casting thy net to the right. So it is about integrity and honesty and being genuine and being strong, strong within so that you can be strong for all and outfoxing the enemy because you know them as well as you know thyself and remember they think they know us but they don't because they don't even know themselves you can't know thyself in the left brain and that's all they are the children of cain the canaanites not the children of abel as we are we are able to know God because we are penitent and humble and we will pass under the bridge of the high ram, high ram abif, and we will go on that straight and narrow journey. They won't. Therefore, we ultimately will always win and they will ultimately always lose. So just before I get started, here are a few words. Um, that as you listen to everything that I'm saying here, just reflect on this, because this is knowing the mind of John F. Kennedy Jr. Sun Tzu. If you know your enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the results of a hundred battles. Supreme excellence consists of breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting, Deception is necessary. All warfare is based upon deception. Hence, when we are able to attack, we must seem unable. This explains everything about President Trump and the Q team and the posts that they reveal and when they reveal them. Remember what I'm saying to you here. Hence, when we are able to attack, we must seem unable to attack. When using our force, we must appear inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. And when we are far away, we must make them believe that we are near. You turn their world upside down, not allowing them to turn our world upside down. Treat your soldiers as you would your own beloved son, as they will follow you into the deepest valley. And they have, oh, have they, and they have seen and rescued the most pitiable cases that we could ever possibly imagine, but they have done it and they've done it for themselves and all of us. And that's because they are loved. All of this comes through this vibration of love. Victorious warriors win first and then go to war while defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. 
Secret operations are essential in war. Upon them, the army relies to make its every move in secrecy. The general who wins the battle makes many calculations in his temple before the battle is fought. The general who loses makes but few. And the other aspect of what I posted today for the first time is this very famous and important Q drop, which is future proves past Q. Future proves past is the ultimate trump card. Why? Because in a matter of days and weeks, joy, happiness, prosperity, equality, freedom will all present itself through the D class and then Nasara. If prosperity can happen in a matter of days and weeks, then the question will be asked by the many who are asleep. Why did it not present itself over the last 1000 years? Why all of a sudden has prosperity flowed like a river freely to all men and all women all across this great earth? That's the trump card because you don't need any other proof or evidence. By providing abundance, the game is over, the lie is revealed, the mainstream media is destroyed because there you have it, what we should have had all along and has been kept hidden from us, true godliness, which is prosperity. So thank you for listening to that and please consider those things as we go through this. Now, as I stated at the beginning, going under the bridge of the high ram, high ram of Biff is the high ram above. And, a bridge is a passage between two worlds. It is taking man, a man, from Egypt to the Holy Land. Now, the Holy Land is known as Israel because in the Old Testament of the Bible, it was said by one of the angels to Jacob who crossed the river alone and wrestled his ego for a day, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And the angel of God said, that is too poor a name for thee. I shall call you Israel and you and your children shall, um, shall fertilize the promised land flowing with milk and honey. What if a subtle change was made in that word Israel? I want you to think, as I've always taught you, it is three concepts or three words made into one word. Israel is Isis, Ra, El. Isis is the name for our heavenly mother. Now, they've turned that into evil, but that's on them. That's, that's not what God created. God created the virgin mother. They've created the whore of Babylon. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. But that is Isis. Ra is Amen-Ra, which is the sun god or the god of the sky within the sun or through the sun. And that is God. That is the father. And El, which is Saturn, El is the child of the father and the mother. And so in Israel, you have the Holy Trinity. But isn't it interesting that... For an organization like the Catholic Church, which hates women and denies the secretity of our virgin, pure, powerful, beautiful, amazing, caring, and compassionate mother, that they would put her first, that the name would be Israel. Let's play a game. Let's play a war game. In front of you on a piece of paper, take those three concepts down and put them individually. I-S, separate it, R-A, separate it, E-L. Now, what if we put it in the right order, which is father, mother, child? What word do you now 
get, you angels, you get raise L. It doesn't that make more sense? Isn't the promised land raise L? Isn't that what this is all about? Is raising to the father? Isn't that the way it is where the mother raises the child through the scalar wave magnetism and we rise up to heaven together and become the family in the crown? And there is the alchemical marriage of the mother, mother and the father in the chamber of the bridegroom. Maybe on purpose, somebody who hates women changed the order of those words. Raise L, raise L. What is L? Raise L. What is L? L is light. And E-L is the electric light of Jesus Christ. Joseph and the uh, technicolor, technicolor jacket. The electrical child of the father and the mother. So raise L is everything. It's it's what our purpose is. It's why we are here, and that's why they have um, uh, <laughs> distorted the true order. Once again, subterfuge. Once again, distraction. Once again, putting us to sleep. Once again, everywhere we turn lies with these demons. So consider that as we go through this. Raise L, the high ram above. Raising the L light above, beautiful. Thank you, Davina, thank you. Now, riders on the storm, why? Because into this house we're born, <laughs> riders on the storm. When we fell from the singularity of, of God in heaven, we fell to the duality, left brain, right brain, hell upon earth, heaven above, hell upon earth, heaven above. If you give this man a ride, sweet family will die. Killer on the run. When we are on our left brain, which is fear, then we are the killers on the side of the road, waiting to blow up in any moment, like a circuit, electrical circuit overloading. And when we overload, we blow a circuit and we do crazed things. So, the significance of the song is is this gnosis that what we're what we've been fighting against is the left brain which are the canaanites and we are the right brain which are the children of abel and everything that they've done as an organized society is to lie to us turn our world upside down and to make us live in fear which is the opposite of abundance we live in lack and they blame it on all of these economic factors. And I can guarantee you, everyone is a lie. There is no reason for lack. There is abundance in everything and in every single way, as you are about to find out in the coming days and weeks. Abundance is real. The illusion is lack. Organized society is the delusion becoming the illusion. And remember, Delusion, D-E, is to take away. Illusion is the light. And that's what they do to us. They take away our light and cast us into darkness. And that is, once again, an allegory of putting us in the left brain darkness instead of the right brain light. We are the children of Abel. Um, <clears throat> the co-writer of the song, Jim Morrison, a writer on the storm, Everything from where I played to you is talking about patriots. He's telling you that Jim Morrison was a patriot. Is he telling you that Jim Morrison is still alive as well? We shall see. The next thing that we see is that he's crossing a bridge, and the bridge is the Michael Callahan Pat Tillman Bridge, which allows one to pass over the Hoover Dam. Why was the Hoover Dam created? They've been taking free energy, as per Nikola Tesla, and selling it to us and disguising it as things as hydroelectricity. Is there such a thing as hydroelectricity? For sure, absolutely, they can, we can make it, we can create hydroelectricity, but do any of these 
hydroelectric power stations actually work or are they fortresses? What are they hiding? What are they covering up by damming rivers and flooding the lands? What is below these waters? What is the real purpose for these dams? And the name on the bridge are two angels, two warriors, two um, patriots that, that gave up their lives to do what was right instead of what was wrong. And their names are on a bridge over the Hoover Dam. Consider. When you look at that beautiful shot at nighttime entering onto this bridge, the Pat Tillman, Michael Callahan Bridge, notice how that there are two rock outcrops and they look like two pillars. This is also symbolizing the twin pillars entering into the Freemason temple, which is Solomon's temple, which is an allegory for our temple. And on the left, you have Yakin, and on the right, you have Boaz. And this is, you know, Ida, Pingala and Ida, which is the, the twin serpents of the subtle body system within us. And what is the significance of the twin pillars within the temple of the Freemasons, Yakim and Boaz. Anything that lies beyond the twin pillars is the truth. It is the sacred truth, which is why these twin pillars are at the front of all Freemason temples. And it's why visitors are blindfolded. Initiates are blindfolded until they prove themselves worthy of being trusted that they will keep these secrets. So there is another major calm that what 107 is saying is that we are going through the twin pillars and that everything he's going to share and say is the truth. It has to be because we're entering into the secretity of the mind, the third ventricle of the brain between your two temples. Your brain is Solomon's temple. Now, turning right, uh, coming off of the bridge and going a little further, we see that the Aston Martin, Aston Martin, uh, Martin is a, a bird of God that sings a pure and holy song, and Aston is to be high, so it is the high bird. So he's driving an Aston Martin underneath the High Ram Abiff Bridge. <laughs> he, he's telling you that he is a patriot and a patriot of God. They're driving the Aston Martin, the high bird with the pure virgin song, Aston Martin. And so he slows down. And I want you to remember in that scene that there are four signs. And so you have the, the local, the local uh, road or uh, local highway. And that is, um, yeah, and you see Davina put up the logo for Aston Martin. You see the eternal wings, <laughs> the eternal wings of righteousness that rise L, rise you up to the, rising the light up to the light. And um, so there are two signs. There is highway, interstate highway uh, 89, 89A, and then there is um, the, uh, the major highway 17. Now, isn't it interesting that 89, 8 plus 9 equals 17. So the people who make these roads and highways know what they're doing. So that the local state road, 89, turns into the federal highway, 17. 8 plus 9 is 17. And of course, it's 89A. A is for alpha and alpha is God. So you have a choice and this is very significant going south if you pause at that scene if going south what did it show it showed the the highway going straight on ahead to the south was wide and broad and spacious and there were huge trucks that were going on it and that is to the south that is as far away from god as can be but when you turn to the right, when you cast your net to the right on Highway 89A North, then you're going to the crown, the dominion of the crown of God in the center earth, 
the Middle Earth. And this is what 107 does. 107, we, in Gematria, we don't count the zero, so it's 1717. So Mr. 17 turns his high bird of the virgin song to the right on 89A17 onto Highway 17 headed north, uh, which, is, which is to the crown, which is to God. So um, everything he's saying is the truth and everything he's saying is the divinity, uh, divinity of God's, God's truth, God's creation and a connection to God. So it is beautiful beyond description. Calms, calms, calms. Everywhere you look in this movie, calms. So he turns onto this straight and narrow highway. And then what's the next thing he shows us as he's talking about Bill Cooper? There are pine trees. What do the pine trees represent? They are balanced between two worlds. They are perfection. They are grace. They are the middle way, the unifying of two worlds above and below. And the pine tree houses the pine cone. And the pine cone is the pineal gland, which is the portal to God. And the pine cone will not open and release those beautiful, delicious seeds inside unless it experiences the baptism of fire. Ionis, Johanna or John the Baptist will come and give you the baptism of water and cleanse the lies away from this dirty land filled with the, the lies of men. And one will come later who will give you the baptism of fire. The one who comes later is Razel. <laughs> Razel is the one who comes later. The man who is risen, raised the light to God, which is Jesus Christ, will come later and give us the baptism. And there it is, the, the church, Razel Iglesias, the church of the raising light. And that is the name of this baseball player, the church of the raising light. Hopefully he is a good and godly man to take such a name. And um, so this is the significance of, of these uh, beautiful words. So this is, again, casting our net to the right, turning right to the pine trees with the pine cones. And then the baptism of fire, the pine cone explodes literally and releases its sacred gold within. And that is a portal that is symbolic and allegorical of the journey within us to cross over, to cross over our physicality at the blood-brain barrier into heaven upon earth. Razel entering to the, to the land of the Father above, high ram above, becoming the high ram above, high ram above. Okay, and, um, and then it, um, so he's on the path that is straight and narrow, and it, then it says remembering. So once again, one of these re-words, which is how we live forever, is to constantly reawaken, to constantly resurrect, um, <laughs> and to constantly remember who we truly are, which is in the right brain. And it says Cupo 782. And this refers, if you go back to Q alerts, and you go back to post Q post 782, you'll see that this refers to uh, a post by Q regarding uh, Bill Cooper, and in particular, his book, Beyond the uh, Pale Horse. And, um, and in the clip that's playing, it's talking about, um, again, how the cabal was always going for your guns, always going for the removal of the Second Amendment, which was going to lead to Canada becoming the Trojan horse, China buying Canada, that's right, seven, eight, and two is 17. Everywhere you look is the 17. The Q post 782 is 17. So what he's also then telling you is that Bill Cooper was part of the Q. And we know that because when he puts on the screen, uh, U.S. Intel intelligence officer Bill Cooper was with the QMI. Bill Cooper, QMI. And then the highway marker comes up, highway marker 3, 
three, three. Three plus three is six, plus three is nine. Three, six, and nine. If you understand the significance of three, six, and nine, then you understand the secrets to our reality. Bill Cooper. Bill Cooper was part of the Q team. And Bill Cooper, notice on, on Juan's Aston Martin on the dashboard, at this time, it shows the inner temperature, uh, the outer temperature at 69 degrees and the inner temperature within the car at 87 degrees, 69 to 87, 69 to 87. Is that the years that Bill was in the Q movement, the Q team, US Intel, 69 to 87, and then from 87 until, until 2001, a, a Milton William Cooper played this role as a crazed conspiracy theorist on the radio, The Hour of Our Time, which was an amazing show, by the way, it truly was, truly was an amazing show. And, um, you know, again, on June 28th of 2001, uh, it was Bill Cooper who said that um, he wouldn't be surprised if a major terrorist attack occurred within the United States and that it would be blamed on somebody by the name of Osama bin Laden. Now, Bill Cooper died on November 6th of 2001. November is the 11th month. 11 plus 6 is 17. Was Bill Cooper killed? Most of you probably know the circumstances around. Nobody can verify what really happened? The circumstances were in, he lived out of town. And, um, the, you know, the neighbors in on his street were evacuated. There was really nobody around to, to, set, to really tell what happened. Was Bill taken out by these devils? Or was Bill Cooper John Galted? Was he John Galted and taken out as he was part of this Q movement? And... Um, uh, we no, we don't leave. Who are the soldiers of the Navy? And those are the Marines. And the Marines don't leave theirs behind. So uh, what really happened to Bill Cooper 11-6, which is 17 of 2001? And then remember, right after this, this is where Juan gets into these numbers and the power of the of the demonic cabal and how they use the Phoenician cue which is instead of balance is to destroy balance. Theirs is the upside down and that their black magic magnifies their spell of 17, their Q, their spell of 17, three times. And that's why 51, three times 17 is this key number that keeps popping up. May 1st, May 1st, five, one. And again, go back in history, look at what May 1st represents. Look at the things that have happened on May 1st. Do the reverse, 1-5, it's the same. And then he gets into Area 51 and he says, you know, don't, don't buy into um, to the scam of what they're telling you about the aliens. Area 51 was like a air traffic control for America. Yeah. Area 51, where in, in America are we told not to go, not to live and not to go near Area 51? How about New Mexico? How about New Mexico? New Mexico, all of these nuclear bomb tests and the threat to this day of, of you know, potential radiation poisoning in New Mexico um, and all the other, <clears throat> all the other issues and concerns regarding Mexico and, uh, and Area 51 in Nevada, um, these are areas they don't want you going. But what exists in these areas? Massive ranches, massive government facilities. And one of the ranches that exists in New Mexico is the ranch of somebody who owned an island in the Caribbean. Yeah, had a friend named Ghislaine Maxwell. Yeah, still alive. They faked his death. Name is Jeffrey Epstein. So what 
Every time we're not allowed to go somewhere, every time they flood the lands with a dam and create these great lakes, what are they hiding? Tunnels, access to tunnels, access to product, which is children, the real gold. Who are the greys? Who are the greys underneath Area 51 who are very small and gray because they don't have access to the sunlight, whose eyes become very big without eyebrows and eyelids because there's no light, there's only darkness, who don't have fully formed folds of their ears because there's so much silence and they need to be able to hear so they can't have obstructions. This is what children look like when they spend long periods of time under the ground in places like Area 51. Who are the greys? Aliens above or their gold below? Have we been lied to about everything? So we continue, we continue. He's on the phone and he's talking to someone in Florida. Who the heck is in Florida? President Trump uh, at Mar-a-Lago. And, you know, and he said, how are you doing with your, you know, your, your pink shorts and um, on your forced vacation? Ha, ha, ha. Is this during the COVID? Was this as a result of some uh, assassination attempt? He's talking to President Trump in Mar-a-Lago <laughs> on a forced vacation while his brother plays, plays the Trump in Walter Reed Hospital with the COVID. Mar-a-Lago. Mar is Mary. Mare is Mary. Mar and Mare are the sea. Lago is the lake. Sea to lake. Sea the lake. Sea to lake. Sea the lake of the single eye. Uh, Mar-a-Lago. So um, again, the three times 17 to amplify their, their spells. And again, the significance of 51, 51 showing up all over the place with Area 51. And then he was talking about Waco and the 51 day standoff for the maximum casting of the spell, the demonic spell that was going on. Who is David Koresh? Who's David Koresh? This brings us to a very important calm in the show and a very, very important point. He talks about 42,000 Slavic women from Northern Germany being taken in 1942, okay? You need to do some math here and you need to do a little homework here. 42,000 in 1942, what the heck was going on in 1942? The world was embroiled in World War II, and World War II had heated up by 1942. Now, casting suspicions upon Churchill and the demonic Rothschild government in, in England, why, what was this fascination that the Allies had for not necessarily attacking German soldiers rather attacking Germany in the north and all of these um, city centers and non-military, non-industrial and often uh, centers like, like you know, um, well, they're just Dresden being probably the greatest example of it, but so many examples of, of cities that pose no threat to them whatsoever and yet Churchill continually ordered bombing against innocent elderly women and children in the north of Germany. And then 107 says that in 1942, they used their submarines to take 42,000 of these blonde haired, blue eyed women from Northern Germany to Antarctica underneath the ice cap and he said, what were they doing underneath the ice cap, right? And here's, and then what does he get right into? He gets right into the story of Tom Hanks and this wave of children, Tom Hanks and Ellen DeGeneres. 
You don't say the names, they don't have to. He doesn't have to say uh, the names. And so here's also what he's telling us, that these Canaanites are disgustingly ugly. Ever seen a picture of any of them? Any of the Rockefellers or Rothschilds? They're the ugliest creations you've ever seen because they live in their left brains. They're disgusting. There is no light. There is no God. There is no Abel. There is only Cain in the left brain. And they needed in this new age after World War II, remember everything is well planned out, was going to be the entertainment to enter in and hold your mind, the entertainment age, and they needed beautiful people to do it. So where did the Brad Pitts and the Tom Cruises and the, you know, Ellen DeGeneres didn't turn out quite, quite well, or Tom Hanks didn't turn out quite well. Where did this wave of more attractive looking demons come from? Adolf Hitler's children. From the beautiful Gnostic Christian godlike children of Germany, the Aryan race. Aryans are not a genetic race. Aryans are a mindset. Aryans are the children of Abel. Aryans cast their nets to the right not to the left. You've been lied to about everything, especially World War II, what it was fought for, who the good guys were, who the bad guys were, and what the outcomes were. Adolf Hitler was fighting to protect all of us and God. His nation was one nation under God, not Adolf Hitler. Sieg Heil, Sieg, the Sieg River, Sieg in German means victory, victory to God through the mother rising. And the SS, that S for the SS is the Norse S rune, which is the solar rune, which is the man rising up to God, up and to the right. Look at the shape of the SS symbol. It is up and to the right. It is up and to the right. It is Razel, Razel. We have been lied to about everything. The swastika is the most beautiful, peaceful, and important symbol because that is us. That is what must occur inside of our head. It is the Big Dipper going through the four seasons. And that is what must occur within us. And it goes up and to the right. Notice the shape of what Hitler made, which was opposite of what the Hebrew tradition was to have it going to counterclockwise and to the left. Hitler had his coming up and to the right. Why? Because you rise up with your cup empty to God up and to the right, and he fills you with light. And then you bring the light down inside your head, and then it comes back up and it says, another please, and another please, and another please and another please, and that's how you live your life. Open-minded is the top of your head being open, penitent. Why do you think the monks shave the back crown of your head? Take a look at images of Prince, and especially when Prince was out in the public giving these, these speeches, talking about how we're being owned and controlled by others. And often when he was out there, he would wear these, um, uh, often was a white hat that fit over the back crown of his head, not the front or top crown, but the back crown of his head, signifying that he was pure and virgin, virgin and humble and holy before the Father. So um, <laughs> there is significance and symbology in everything. The, the demons have turned it all upside down down, but we have been lied to about what's going on. And then again, a 107, what do you think they were doing under the ice cap, under the, the sheets of the ice cap? And that's what they're doing. And they're making the, the Tom Hanks and the Brad Pitts and the Tom Cruises and the Ellen DeGeneres of the world. So they're not so horrifically ugly as are the rest of these demons. This is why. This is why it's constantly stealing so that they can live or be exalted. Stealing our children, stealing our women, never looking us in the eyes, never facing us 
face to face, one to one, mano y mano in battle, always stabbing us in the back, always from the back or behind like a scorpion. So that was the significance um, of going through there. Um, he talked about the school shootings. This is the CIA program, Orion. Once again, Orion, the three kings of Orion's belt, pointing to the dog star, which is serious. We have to get serious about the Southern Cross, which is us upon the cross, and we must rise. We must rise um, in our fallen state to become the the um, the son of God, the risen child. And they turn it from beauty beyond description and goodness beyond description into something that is, is awful, Beetlejuice. And, um, and this is that program that they did to turn people who, who had issues into killers that could be triggered. And so like he said, 107 said, with regard to the school shootings, all they have to do is be told certain words and then they are killing other kids on schools. And then it's the problem is that it's the guns and we got to get the guns. It isn't the CIA who never has worked for any taxpayer, the CIA, MI5, MI6, the Mossad, they're all the same. They're all the same. They run these countries for the cabal, for the Phoenicians, for the children of the Canaanites. They are ruled over by the Jesuits. They are ugly and despicable beyond description. And these are the ones who have been doing all of these false flags and uh, yeah, uh, all of the, the false things, Sandy hoax, everything is all a Jesuit op. Okay, can be run through MI5, MI6, the Mossad or the CIA, but it's all, they all work for the same team, which are the Jesuits, which is the order of Jesus. This is how much they fear Jesus Christ because they put Jesus Christ's true legacy behind the Jesuits, who are the most evil and vile and disgusting creations ever. Don't forget that. The Jesuits. This is where it all came from. This is Operation Project Orion. He talked about Bill Cooper, and when he did, remember in the back, they were showing a white hat. So he's saying that the Q team are white hats. He was saying Bill Cooper was a white hat, but he said, Bill Cooper, he said, you know, but, but you know, let's be fair. He said, I knew Bill. I knew Bill only too well, and I knew Bill had feet of clay. Feet of clay means that you're rooted in Egypt, in your uncles, you're stuck in the mud. And then when push comes to shove, you don't take the steps that are necessary to prove yourself to God because your ankles are fixed in the mud. So people say that, you know, that they're yellow belly or they don't have any, any courage. It's just that they are rooted in their left brain. So Bill, listening to all of these stories and teaching everything that was going on, um, spent far too much time in the left brain, which is the mud of Egypt, and he became rooted and he had feet of clay. That's what it means. The feet of clay is your feet are stuck in the mud of Egypt and you must cross the river, wash your feet and go to the Holy Land. Not Israel, Raezel. <laughs> Raezel. Um, and during this time, very, very, very importantly, what did he say about, about William Cooper? That William Cooper was all caught up in that alien scam. And I talked to Bill a lot about the alien scam, and I got him to change his tune. Alien scam, Area 51, Roswell. Then it showed the image of Roswell, New Mexico, and the 50,000 uh, residents of, of Roswell. Gematria 5. Again, he's telling you in plain sight that aliens space out there is the great lie. And it was created to take you away from the only space that exists, which is infinite space within you. Within you, where you contact higher beings of yourself, higher dimensional beings 
of yourself within this infinite world of space within. And therefore, the entire construct of our reality is to get a job, to go to school, to earn money, and to be famous out there, which means nothing. And the only thing that matters is within. You must become the, the corn on the cob within, not the corn in the field that gets, uh, or the John Barley corn that gets beaten and, um, and attacked and, and manipulated in infinite numbers of ways. We must go within. Then he goes to the grave site. He's playing, and this is what um, uh, Siobhan is going to play for us at, uh, at the end of our, our show today. Abraham, Martin, and John. But remember, it's also Bobby Kennedy. Uh, in the song, Dion also has the, uh, the verse uh, to Bobby as well. And uh, I'm going to do a show uh, coming up about uh, John and Robert Kennedy, the two brothers, and what they did. They were the original Q. They were the original President Trump. It's just that they didn't cut the head of the Hydra off first. So, um, and then notice uh, at the funeral site, there is the um, Z stone at the head for uh, 107, the shadow of Juan wearing his, his hat. And there was a Z stone, which turns to, it clearly shows you that it's a rune stone and it's an R, R stone, which is for the risen man. Um, the significance of the, the R rune stone is the significant, significant man. And then when uh, JFK Jr. or Juan Osavan turns and pulls away and is Aston Martin from, from that scene in the movie, um, on the back of the car, the license plate change again, changes again, and this time it's the Punisher. So through the, the taking down of these white hats, now we have to punish. It's the Punisher, and this is why he's headed to Dallas, and then there's no forgiveness for what they've done. There's no forgiveness. It's too late for forgiveness. It's too late to say you're sorry. Now comes the Punisher. And when it comes, like I said to you, are you ready to hear the truth? Are you ready to hear the unadulterated, uncensored truth directly from the editor-in-chief, President Trump, to you on your cell phone? So be prepared because it's their turn now. It's the Q team's turn now to turn the tables and all their little sucky lies that have gone on forever to paint President Trump and divide a country um, against one of the most beautiful, loving, caring men and make him look like this uh, uh, egomaniac devil. Now it's our turn. Now it's our turn and the punisher is going to punish without forgiveness. It's not our job to forgive these demons. It's our job to never forget these demons and what they've done so that this never happens again. In time, can we forgive? Perhaps, maybe, if they do the work and change, but we can never ever forget because what they've done, they've done in cold blood. They know what they're doing. They know who they're attacking. And remember, it isn't you or I face up. With all those attacks that Colleen and I had on our homestead here with animals all around us, so we felt vulnerable because they could literally shoot our horses um, or our cats that are outside. Um, they never once showed their faces. And I ran out of the protective property boundaries and walls and I showed myself on many occasions, but they never ever showed themselves. They never ever confronted me, mano y mano, one to one, face to face, locked in our eyes, and then let's have a battle for good or evil because I guarantee you I would have won. Without a gun, I would have won because righteousness and goodliness always defeats evil. All you ever have to do is stand up. So the drops are, are crazy and they're coming. Um, there's a wonderful tribute uh, in the car to Kellyanne and hubby 
That is Kellyanne Hub News, who is on YouTube, and she does an incredible job of, of decoding the Q posts. And she is a staunch believer that JFK Jr. is alive and that he's played the role from time to time of 107 and, um, and Vincent Fusca and others. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to Kellyanne, you should. She is a very goodly person. She, she does her best and she does a great job. Uh, and she's absolutely on the right side of things. And she's someone that you should follow and can trust. She's a very good person. There's a beautiful tribute to her and Kellyanne and hubby, Kellyanne Hub News. There she is, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So then we see the fire trucks, the yellow and red fire trucks, fire trucks put out fires. And then he starts talking immediately. And basically what he's saying is that Tom Hanks is Michael Rockefeller. He didn't get eaten by alligators in the Florida Everglades. And that they're cousins. Who's, who's, who's the cousin to make up they? That's Ellen DeGeneres, who is a boy, <laughs> who is a man that they made into a woman, another one of these Baphomets. And um, they're both Rockefellers uh, <laughs> and uh, they're cousins. So Tom Hanks, uh, and of course, you know, he's referring to Tom Hanks by the, the movies that he's referring to. And, and, you know, he finishes off by saying, this is a really a catch me if you can kind of thing. <laughs> and he said that, you know, he wasn't a castaway. <laughs> so he's, he's telling you it's Tom Hanks and, um, and the cousin is, is Ed. Ed Rockefeller is Ellen Degenerate. Ellen Degenerate is Ed Rockefeller, and he's the cousin to Michael Rockefeller. And again, their mothers are women of Northern Germany taken during World War II with these coastal raids and these raids on the cities that, that uh, Hitler and the Germans were not able to pr protect because they thought they were in a war they didn't realize that they were in something very different. And they took these blonde haired, blue eyed, beautiful, righteous women, and they put them under the sheets, under the ice in Antarctica, and they bred. Now, immediately, what does he do? He goes immediately into a discussion that these are not clones. They cannot create consciousness. And so he describes uh, these clones, and I'm just going to find the, um, the term here. Yeah. Do, 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 do. They are bio machines and they modify genetics, but they don't have soul. Uh, they refer to them as their kids, but they're just machines. And so it's difficult to say um, just how deep this goes. Uh, in terms of, of what they've done. But again, when you use this term clone, that's fine, use it correctly. Only God can create or bestow consciousness. That's why I teach your real father. This might be hard for some of you to hear, but it's the truth. Your real father and mother is God in heaven and mother earth. I guarantee it because man cannot bestow consciousness. That's not what's occurring during a sexual act that, that creates a child. And remember, this is what the cabal talk about, and this is what 107 in his book, Kid by the Side of the Road, talks about in the book, how, how the cabal were just shocked when they were doing all of these experiments in, in sort of... Um, semen transfer and, you know, sort of uh, impregnating eggs in, in uh, Petri dishes, um, that every time, whether it was natural or, 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 you know, in a laboratory, that there was always a spark of light. There was always a flash of light because that's the birth of creation and that can only come from God. We do not possess that. Our parents 
are a pair of wrens. Now that's not, I don't mean that to condescend to our parents, some of which are fantastic, some of which are okay, some of which are downright horrible, but they are not our creators. God creates and what we truly are is consciousness and only God can bestow consciousness. And our physical forms only come from the mother. If there's no mother, then there's no physical forms. That's why we come of the earth and we return to the earth if you so choose to go that route, but you don't have to. So our true parents are God and the sacred mother. They truly are. That is the milk and the honey. And we are the children of the land of the milk and honey. And that was promised to Abel, who are the Aryans, who are those that cast their nets to the right, which is us. We own the Holy Land, not some disgusting country of that is uh, of ruled behind the scenes by Jesuits. No, we all together as one own the Holy Land. And it is important that each and every year we make a trek to the Holy Land and we bathe in the energetical vibrations that the mother releases in the Holy Land, which heal us. And we have bare feet and we walk from the Sea of Galilee uh, in the north to the, to the Dead Sea in the south so that we can read the Dead Sea Scrolls. And in our fallen state, in our humble state, that we then learn to become pillars of salt, which is the salvation, which is what grows up and out of the Dead Sea. And then the Israeli government comes daily and cuts down all of these pillars of salt. And they tell them that it's a service to, to uh, vacationers, but they don't want you to see this miracle of these pillars of salvation coming from these waters. This is who we are. This is the Galilee, which means circuit, is your skull to the Dead Sea, which is shaped like your sacrum. This is the torso of our physical form. This is mankind. The Holy Land is the land of mankind. And every year we make a humble trek to this land in stillness and silence, and we are recharged. We are resurrected through the vibrations of the mother in the Holy Land. And that's why, that's why without President Trump, there would never have ever been peace. Israel could have taken out the rest of Palestine in half a second, but they never were going to because you have to have constant war. So people don't go, don't want to go to the Holy Land. Who wants to go to, to the Holy Land when you could you know, step on a bomb or be blown up by a drone or some sort of thing, a Scud missile? Um, they just made it into a terror zone so you stay away because everything is trying to take you away from the truth, which is you must rise L. You must rise the light within you up to the Father in heaven through the mother. And that's it, precisely what the, the Holy Land helps you to do, and then you rise to the Mount of Olives, okay? Don't have time to get into that story, but it's very powerful. So, um, again, we go through all of these things, and he was talking about, um, he mentioned Samson. Samson was, was known in the ancient land of Israel as, as one of the most famous judges and that Samson fell and Samson could not control his, his, the gift of his great strength, which was ruled through the follicles of his hair. There's an allegory to this, but there's a truth to this. The follicles of your hair are growing out of your crown and we are taught to cut our hair constantly. We're taught to dye our hair. We're taught to do all of these things to destroy the follicles, which are miracles of of the crown this is that your hair is a miracle and your hair is a representation of your hallowedness 
and everything that they do, including, you know, the shampoo industry not being regulated. What's in shampoo? Why are so many men bald? What's in the beer? What's in the food? What's in the shampoo? What's in the conditioner? Why do you need to leave the conditioner in your hair for three minutes? What's in conditioner? What's this doing? Why are so many men losing their hair? Well, it's genetics, eh? It's, it's your fault. And yeah, that's right. I remember my great, great, great grandmother saying about 7 million years ago, there was an uncle on my father's side who, who once didn't have a lot of hair. So that must be it. It's genetics. It's not what I eat not what I think, it's not what I do, it must be genetics. And they're lying to you. So your hair is, is sacred. Your hair is this uh, miracle of life, a frequency that is growing out of your crown. And so it needs to rise. And, and when you create an electromagnetic uh, condition, around your hair, when you create an electromagnetic environment around your hair, what does your hair do? It stands up on end. <laughs> because it can defy gravity. Because your hair is, is like the pine tree, which is constantly wanting to grow up. But it's that like the letter R rising to heaven, but it becomes the letter N because we're not doing the right work. And it falls back down to the earth like the letter N. The N is the R, but it can't sustain itself. So our hair is, is very significant. And that's why it's touched upon. Samson is mentioned. Samson in the Bible, with, without a doubt, it's showing you that Samson was helping these demons uh, to capture and to harvest children. There's no doubt about it. Read between the lines. And Samson was being used to harvest children. And then in the end, when he was confronted with the mass of evil that he had done in his life and how he was deceived by everyone, including uh, Delilah, <laughs> which de is, de is to take away, and Lila or is the flower of the lilac, which is purity, and, and so her name is, is taking away the purity and of the purple rain, the purple bliss, the lila of the lilac. And she was a deceiver and she was paid 11,000 shekels, 11,000. So that's the significance of the, of the 11, the false god, by these demons to, to trick and to get Samson to fall in love with her and learn it which the power came from his hair, the follicles of his hair. And then in the end, they captured Samson, they blinded Samson, and they tied him between the two. Samson finally recognized what he had done, this judge, highest judge of the land, betraying the people right down to our children. What did he do? He then used his great strength one last time to tear down the temple and to crash the enormity, the weight of all upon himself and all of the cabal to destroy these demons of the left brain. And that's what Samson did. And it's what so many of you said when, you know, uh, Lynn Wood talked about this, this how, how they force minions to capitulate, which is that they come up to them with a gun and a child and they say, and a camera, and they say, rape the child then shoot the child in the head. Uh, if they give you the gun, why are you not shooting them? And if they won't give you the gun until you rape a child, then why aren't you diving on top of them, wrestling the gun away from them and shooting them and then yourself for being in this position? You don't do that ever. Life isn't worth living if you are uh, despicable. Life isn't worth living if you're godless. You don't do this. If you take your own life, ye shall be rewarded. The suicide bombers, who are these? They were doing this for God, willing to give their life to take out the devils, the demons, and they were rewarded with, and I, I forget the number, um, I believe, was it 77 virgins? And, uh, and of course, these are not women. This is not young girls. Virgin is virgin thoughts. So you're rewarded with these pure virgin thoughts of God in heaven. 
So when you would rather die than commit evil, then you are rewarded eternally, which is what we must all do. So again, drops, 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 talking about giants in the Holy Land because we were once great and massive in our stature because we were massive in our minds. We are not midgets. We are not Lilliputians in the Holy Land. We are giants through that giant resonance that is created in the Holy Land eating figs, eating dates, eating olives upon the mount, and then we rise. Then he shows Harley Davidson. There's two skulls, one that is, that is um, goodly and one that is godly. He's saying that Harley Davidson has some good in it and has bad in it. D.C. is a swamp. He's parallel, paralleling Washington, D.C. to Isengard in The Lord of the Rings in The Two Towers, the stronghold of Saruman, who Professor Tolkien described essentially as being a, a minion of Sauron. Okay, so Sauron would be the dome minion, dominion, and Saruman would be the minion wanting to have total power himself. And so Saruman fell from the purity of white Saruman to many colors because he would not accept his purity and he muddied his coat. And that he said, you can't just, you can't just drain the swamp and fill it with water once. He said, you have to do it again and again. You have to flood this, this land. You gotta fill it and keep filling it with water. That's Isengard and what the Ents did in The Lord of the Rings, <laughs> paralleling it. And so again, one of the reasons I'm able to decode and to know a lot of 107 is for whatever reason, we seem to have read a lot of the same books. And obviously that these were very powerful uh, uh, books to us, such as Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged, uh, the Lord of the Rings, uh, again, Sherlock Holmes, Arthur Conan Doyle, Agatha Christie, Hercule, Hercule Poirot, again, exercising that frontal lobe, deduction, the science of deduction to deduce that through the frontal lobe. Um, he talked about uh, not wanting to go to a meeting with energy and then what is the scene? Far above in the background are silent wind towers <laughs> powering through simply allowing the breath of God to rush through these, these wings, these propellers and a pinwheel, which is, which is again, the pinwheel is to seek God. And, um, and in silence is the harnessing the breath of God. And in the forefront on the ground in Egypt, so the background with the silent wind power is Raezel or Israel, right? That is the higher land up and to the right. And in the foreground were these working, and isn't it funny how these, uh, these oil, these oil uh, machines that they, they look, they, the motion that they do seems to be that of a man hunched over, constantly raising his pick and lowering it into the earth and raising his pick and lowering it into the earth as we toil the land for somebody else's wealth, as we despoil the mother for somebody else's wealth and glory. We do these things. So in the foreground showing oil, which isn't evil of itself because it's created by the mother. So it's not bad, but it is a inefficient, it is a form of rape. We, we don't. There's no need for us to do this um, at all. No need for us to do this at all to the mother when we can take freely from the father above in the wind. And of course, free energy, which goes inside of every parcel of air, inside the air for eternal um, abundant energy. Okay. So that's the significance. Now, then we shift and it says, he says, and he's, he's driving to Trump Tower and he says the stolen future. And he says that in the Bible, when, um, when a major crime is committed and the, the, the people did not remedy or didn't resolve this crime, 
that there was a pestilence over the land and that there was a drought upon the land until such time that they finally took steps to make restitution, resurrection, restitution to the evil that was committed. And if we just turn and leave it, it's not going away. And that is clearly because he ends up in Dallas and in Dealey Plaza, he's talking that all of this is as a result of what they did and what all of us accepted what they did to President John Kennedy, this beautiful angel sent by God, number 35, which is eight eternity, to come and to lead us to this righteous path. And they took him out. And then in the scenes that they're showing there in Dallas, the various positions of Jennifer Mack, dressed up in a black suit, black hat, CIA, CIA op. They're showing you the CIA buildings, that, that very weird looking building on the, uh, the far side of Dealey Plaza when you first come in, close to the penis. And I believe they were using it as the post office at the time. That was the CIA headquarters. And then they were showing various positions. So there was the man on the curb, which is the umbrella man, CIA. Then they're showing the, that there was a man on the uh, concrete abutment that supposedly had Abraham Sapruder. Abraham Sapruder was a Freemason um, in that position. And then they also showed a spotter on top of the bridge um, overlooking uh, Elm Street as well. So what he's saying is that there is a triangulation of crossfire, that there were uh, three sniper teams and that those were the positions of the three spotters uh, in Dealey Plaza. Uh, and also, uh, I think in terms of the, the frizzled hair that Jennifer showed when she was on the bridge, that's also a tip of the cap to Isaac Cappy and also that uh, tip that Isaac Cappy is, is still alive and that he was John Galted as well. And so they're just showing you so many things about Dealey Plaza. And he shows you this, uh, this um, marker that was placed in Dealey Plaza by the cabal declaring Dealey Plaza a, a, um, uh, a, a sacred place of history uh, because of the historical events that took there. It's kind of like a feather in their cap for for what they did so um charlie i see i see we're coming right yeah. to the end here my dear okay good he'll be, a, he'll be a little ways yeah he'll be a little ways yeah. um now what jfk says is that who will be valiant for justice who will be valiant for justice that's what jfk was JFK, the 35th president, was Captain America, was Mr. Valiant. And since he's gone, the where we turn to is Prince Valiant. <laughs> Who's Prince Valiant? The son of John F. Kennedy, who didn't die in an airplane crash because the Clintons outsmarted him. He outsmarted them because he grew to know himself and then know thy enemy. If you want to know who John F. Kennedy Jr. is, then you need to read and understand Sun Tzu and the art of war, for that is that mind of discipline, of righteousness before God, of the Eastern righteous path, the road that leads to the rising sun, Rizel. And this is the man who swore to clean up, clean up this mess that was created by the swamp in Washington, D.C. John F. Kennedy Jr. is Prince Valiant. Donald Trump is the 45th president of the United States, and he is the last president of the United States. And now this brings me into my final remarks here, which is perfect with regard to President Trump, and we see him now. Why is he at the Alamo? Alamo is a metaphor, an allegory, a reference for patriots. And patriots is pa, which is father. Patriots 
are loyal to God. Patriots are loyal to God and country. God and country. They're righteous souls. They're pat patriots. He's at the Alamo because everything moving forward is about the United States of America as a republic. And there is a lot of talk going around right now. And I can confirm that right now, Texas is not part of the corporation of the United States in America created by the cabal in uh, 1871. Texas is the lone star state. There's one star because there's one God and they are loyal to God. And if there's if we have to drain the capital, the swamp, D.C., and like in the Lord of the Rings for decades, we have to flood it and turn until it turns into a lake, Mar a Lago, the sea, the maritime admiralty laws becoming a lake, Mar a Lago, ah is two. Mar is Mary, the sea. Lago is lake. So it is the the false. ISIS, the false Mary of the maritime admiralty laws of the sea to a lago, a lake, a place of stillness and silence and purity. And that's where we're headed. So will the new capital for these United States of America be in Texas? I wish I was in the land of Dixie. Oh, Wow. It's it's warm there. You know, it, it's warm. You can you can have, you know, all every every time of the year, you know, you can have uh, you can have uh, a get together in Texas. You know, it's very, you know, good climate, good climate. It's right on the Rio Grande, granddaddy of them all. The Rio Grande is God's river. And that is Jordan River separating the right in the left-hand paths. And America is now casting its net to the right. Texas, the Lone Star State. Look at those flags waving in God's breath. Do you see any yellow tassels on them of the specious pirates of the sea? Do you see any reference to the cabal on those flags? I don't. I see flags of God. I see flags of patriots. I see of God and country. You have been lied to, and I am sorry for this. And I am sorry to have to be, it seems at times, the only one who constantly, constantly has to take you out of your comfort zones and to tell you all of these things. It, it you know, it, it's not the funnest thing in the world, but. I have to tell the truth because that's all that matters. The only thing that matters is the truth because people will argue with that and they'll say, no, you have to have light and love. You cannot have light and love without the truth. Light and love can be turned into a Hollywood movie and sold to you for nine bucks in Hollywood. We have to become righteous. We have to cross the river grand, the Rio Grande, and we have to be with the Father. It is of God and country. It is no longer about pirates of the high seas. It is about law of the land. And that's what we're seeing. And that's why I wanted to do the show today with John F. Kennedy Jr., and his white Stetson hat. What did what present did Lyndon Johnson give to John Kennedy when he arrived in Texas? Here, Mr. President, put this on. It was a grand white Stetson hat. And President Kennedy put on his fedora. <laughs> when and by the way, a fedora, a fedora is is a hat of god it is a it is a, a top hat a hat of of uh of uh, penitence before god so uh it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful and so what are we looking at i think we're looking at the swan song of this man because moving forward if he stays on as president 
you you have a nation divided because the demons have done their work too well. And if he leads us into the Holy Land, believe me, America is a Holy Land. Just look at the Mississippi River from the, the skull in Minnesota upon the granitic rock all the way to the to the sacrum of, uh, of New Orleans, uh, the Mississippi is, is the holy land. America is a holy land. It just needs to be governed over by patriots. And that's at the individual level. The individual is the divine one who goes within. It's the individual level. Why are Texans so strong and independent? Because they have this tradition to connect to God. And in that connection with God, they are so independent because you don't need anything besides the connection to the father and the mother. That's why it's the Lone Star State. That's why Texans are so strong. It makes perfect sense that they would be the new capital of the new republic without any pirates in it. Look at this, is being done, shown on the right side broadcasting agency and it's 304, <laughs> 304 p.m., which is seven. And here comes 777 to intervene on God's behalf and to tell us we are in the takedown of the cabal. Nothing can stop this. Nothing can stop what is happening. And the next phase, and it might start today, it might start right now, is going to be D-class. But remember, D-class will follow, be followed by Nasara. And then that is future proves the past. You don't need to give people endless amounts and pages and pages and pages of factual documents proving how evil these people are. You just have to roll out Nasara. And people will wake up on their own and they'll go, oh my God. How is this possible? They've been lying to us forever. They've been hiding things from us forever. You show them a med bed, you show them a maglev train, you show them the, the AI technology that exists, and then you will know future proves past. We have been ruled over by monsters and the future is going to prove this because it's all gonna be rolled out to you because all of us together make up what God is, which is the collection of his holistic, whole, hallowed creation. And that's what this is all about. So with that, I wanna say thank you to uh, Davina. We, we got this to work, Davina. Thank you very, very much uh, for doing so. And thank you very, very much, everyone, for being here. You may need to go through this uh, a couple of times, a few listens, and uh, but it's all there. It's all there. God has created. And one thing that, that I missed, I actually missed it on purpose, and I left it for the end of the show here. Remember when he stopped to get peach pie and he was talking about the Obamas? And uh, on the sweater of the lady was uh, established 1927. 1927 is code for 199. And if you look at Q post 199, it's the D class post. And 199 as a number is a number that references uh, the reveal of truth, 199. And then he began to talk about Obama and then Michelle Obama and it's Michael LeVon Robinson and he's a Baphomet and all of these things. And then through that, he was talking about, once again, that how does a worker finish his day on the space station? He finishes his day on the space station by putting on a titanium suit and falling back to Earth because the space station is on Earth. And then as he's saying this, as he's talking that the, that the, the moon landings are fake and that the space station is fake, it's all fate. What did he show? What did he show? He showed the passenger side mirror. And what does it write in every single car or vehicle? What does it write on the passenger side mirror? Objects in this mirror are closer than they appear. What was in the mirror? 
the sun. The sun is about 50 miles away. It's the same size as the moon. It's inside the firmament. It's a local phenomenon. That's why it's hot when it's above you. And as it moves away from you, it go, grows cool. It's not 93 million miles away. They're lying to you. It is close. Objects in this mirror are closer than they appear. Wow. He just blew everything to the ground. The pillars of the temple of the Freemasons are no more. And with that, thank you again for listening. And Siobhan, we are ready for you to play this incredible song. Thank you, Siobhan. We love you. Love you, Davina. Thank you, Siobhan. And I just want to uh, thank you so much, Charlie. That was so beautiful. Charlie and I have a show coming up next week. So please stay tuned for that. And those of you who are listening on the replay, please make sure that you are sharing this video, downloading it, keeping it in your files, looking at it again and again, because you know we want you to have this information. So thank you, Charlie. So much gratitude to you. I cannot even express it right now. We're gonna go to the song, Shaban. Go Hi ahead, guys. Thank you so much, Davina. You've been an absolute rock star. Um, I am so emotional right now. I hope I get through this song. I really do. And I'm just going to do it because everyone needs to go and watch Trump, okay? Has anybody here seen my old friend Abraham? Can you tell me where he's gone? He freed a lot of people, but it seems the good day young. Yeah, I just looked around and he's gone. Has anybody here seen my old friend Martin? Can you tell me where he's gone? He freed a lot of people, but it seems the good day young. Yeah, I just looked around and he's gone. Has anybody here seen my old friend John? Can you tell me where he's gone? He freed a lot of people, but it seems the good day young. Yeah, I just looked around and he's gone. Didn't you love the things they stood for? Didn't they try to find some good for you and me? And we'll be free, free someday. I know we will be someday. Has anybody here seen my old can you tell me where he's gone? Thought I seen him walking up over the hill with Abraham, Martin, and John. With Abraham, Martin, and John. I am so emotional, guys. Charlie, you just blew my mind and it's just incredible. And this is just, everything is too much. <laughs> Thank you. It's wonderful. Thank you, Shaban. Thank you, Charlie. We love you. And we are going to be live again tomorrow. Please come back. And then of course, Charlie and I are doing a show again next week. Please check it out on sexybrilliant.org. 
We are a registered nonprofit foundation to remove toxic shame and raise human consciousness. And we are so grateful that everybody's here and you're sharing this video, downloading it and keeping it for your own personal files. And you are watching 107 Decoded by Charlie Freak, hosted by Davina Core, and music by Shaban O'Brien. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.